I found the most famous movie traps on the entire internet. So today I'm testing them in Minecraft to see if they actually work and if you should use them to prank your friends. Watch until the end to find out. First up here we got Gru from Despicable Me who looks like he's trying to break into Vector's house. Oh, okay, what is he listening for here, guys? <laughs> he just got knocked out. All right, he's trying to jump over the wall now. What's gonna happen here? Vector's ready here with the keyboard. Oh, ow! Ooh, oh, that is got to hurt. What next? He's over with the jetpack. Oh, he just got launched. Wait a minute, I reckon we could actually make that in Minecraft. Do you think it would work? I'm gonna pretend to be Gru, and I wanna make the trap where when he jetpacks over the wall here and he lands on the ground, he just gets launched straight into the air. I think I have a pretty good idea, and it involves using a little bit of a command block magic. Give ourselves a command block, hide it away under the ground. And what I need to do is go ahead, I'm gonna grab the coordinates for the bottom left hand corner of this gate right here, guys. Negative 153969. Five, five, five. All right, we're gonna open this up. We're gonna go repeat, always active. And we wanna do execute, oh, execute position. And then on those coordinates I wrote down, so negative one, five, three, nine, six, nine, five, five, five. And then we go if entity, all players, and then we need it to be within the range of the gate. So how big is the gate here, guys? From this spot, it's one, two, okay, three, four, five, 22, 23, 24. Okay, so it's 24 blocks wide, guys, both ways. Let's go ahead. And what we need to do then is we need to type in DX equals 24, comma, D, uh, DZ equals 24, close square bracket. And then when somebody is in that range of those 24 blocks of that fence, guys, we want to give them the effect, effect give at P levitation. But we want it to be super powerful, but only really short. So we'll go one for 70 power and true. All right, let's see if this works here, guys. So let's say I just got my butt whooped by a bunch of boxing gloves. Now I've got my jetpack on and I'm like flying over the wall and then landing here and then boom, I just get launched straight into the sky, guys. Holy moly. Number two, that sinking feeling. Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. All right, what do we Even got here, guys? Home Alone standards, uh -huh. this trap is pretty electrifying. All right. When Marv tries to wash off the paint from Kevin's previous oh, trap, no. What's gonna his happen? choice of no! sink couldn't have been worse. As he grabs the oh, faucets, no! Kevin activates an arc welder connected oh, to the sink. That looks so painful, Marv's guys! screams get wilder and oh, wilder imagine as getting Kevin cranks up the jeeps, when you just try to wash your hands, hair, man. and even turning him into a cartoonish that skeleton. That is brutal! <laughs> Popper can transmit electricity and thus electrocute players. So first, we're going to need a sink. But the key feature here is you've got to build it on a floor of copper blocks. Whether that's in your kitchen, your bathroom, whatever. You're going to need that so we can actually transmit the electricity. Then you can build whatever sink you want. I'm going with some stair designs here facing backwards. We'll waterlog those up. And then for the tap, I'll use a tripwire hook. And then the lever can be to turn on and off the tap. But in reality, it is turning off and on our electrical signal. So behind this lever, this one I actually know exactly exactly what I want to do. We're going to have a redstone torch. Then you want to grab any kind of random block, you guys, and we're going to bring this out. One, two. You want to bring this one down, place a block there, and place a block here. We're going to need our redstone coming out of that redstone torch, down one, and then we need a redstone torch on this side. That should turn off. Then we're going to place a quartz block there, and then under here in this little gap, we're going to place a repeater facing it towards the wall, and then underneath here, we'll place one redstone dust and a sticky piston facing upwards. Facing towards this wall, we're going to place a lightning rod coming out of the wall, break out this block, and you want to extend your copper floor out to where the sticky piston is. So when we hit that lever, it's going to bring this lightning rod down so it's attached to this copper and it's going to transmit the lightning through the floor, electrocuting whoever is standing on the floor. I think this is as close as we can get in Minecraft. We're actually going to need a trident with channeling. So let's go ahead, grab ourselves an anvil, guys. Chuck this down. We're going to need our trident. We're going to use an enchanted book of channeling to give ourselves a trident of channeling. And what you want to do is we're going to throw this directly down on our lightning rod like so. Bam! just like that and now all we have to do is make sure that the weather is a thunder like so and now anytime a survival player comes up here and they're just like oh yes let's use the sink they turn on the tap and boom check it out guys we're actually getting electrocuted and as you can see i was struck by lighting to death as it was transmitted through the copper how dope is that so you can see what's going on here when we hit the lever it's pushing up and down on this sticky piston which is bringing down lightning through the trident and then the lightning is actually traveling through the copper blocks. You can actually see the particles there electrocuting any player who stands on those blocks. Number one, baptism by fire. Oh my. Home alone. <laughs> 
Deciding that to avoid terrifying. continued burns from the heated front door, uh -huh. Harry goes around back to enter through the kitchen, All right. going out of the frying pan and into the fire. The fire? Literally. What does that mean? Harry's burst through the door activates uh -huh. a blowtorch that a sets his torch. head on fire. And what? gives us this timeless reaction. Yo! <laughs> that is true! That is awesome! <laughs> Basically, we wanted to somehow, when we open this door, Activate a redstone signal, which then connects to two dispensers here on the roof with fire charges that will rain it down fire on the player's head, just like in Home and Alone. So I think we can do that using an observer. If we break down these blocks here, we're gonna have an observer facing downwards, like so. Oh, we need it to go downwards with that arrow down and the door on top there, and then a redstone dust here. If we open that, okay, that'll output a redstone signal, but it only lasts for a second. We need to repeat over and over again. How are we gonna do that? Okay, wait, I have an idea. Um, we're going to need to destroy those. Let's bring these down one extra block like so. We can bring that redstone round here, but we need it to last. So we can make it last using a sticky piston and two slime blocks. Now, I know that sounds weird. We're going to put obsidian on either side of these slime blocks so it doesn't stick to anything. Uh, obsidian up here because that sticky piston is going to push that slime block up. Once that's done to you guys, we need to connect that sticky piston to the door of the redstone. Um, and so if we come around here, we just need to bring this underneath. So let's go ahead and bring that down. Uh, how are we going to do this? Okay, there's our sticky piston right there, guys. Let's dig under here. And that needs to come up somehow. So if we place an observer facing... Okay, no, it needs to face upwards here, guys. And it can detect the redstone signal. So we bring that there, just like that. As you guys can see, let's go ahead and open the door, see whether this works. All right, close the door. Boom. All right, as you can see, it pushes those sticky... Uh, those slime blocks up, just like so. And if we go ahead and open it again, hopefully... Yeah, okay, that's going to bring them down. Perfect. Okay, wait. I'm going to get rid of that obsidian for now. I think I've got a better idea. We're going to grab ourselves a repeater and put a redstone block there. And then when that slime block comes up, it'll complete a redstone circuit, which can go into this comparator. So we'll need to, uh, to grab that obsidian, bring that round, and then this can just be whatever block. That doesn't really matter, I don't think. We'll fill that in with redstone dust, put that on subtract mode. This will come round, and we can wrap this onto our dispensers like so. That means when this slime block comes up, that'll activate this circuit and constantly, repeatedly bring down the fiery flames from that dispenser. Then I guess we suppose we can just cover up the rest of this room so it looks totally normal. And then so you can't see it from above, just like so. The only thing that's going to stand out is that obsidian block has to be above the slime. All right, let's give this a go. Switch into survival. Open the door and... <laughs> yes, it worked. Check that out, guys. Look at that. You open it up and these two dispensers just bring it down. Fiery hell. Look, guys, let me tell you, no one's going to want to sneak into your house after you got this trap going. The Lion King has a trap? How exactly? Okay, so Simba here gets distracted by a lizard, which brings him down to the middle of this ravine. How is this a trap here, guys? I haven't watched this movie in a long time. I can't remember what happens. Guys, I feel like... Oh, no. Oh, no. I know what happens. No. No. Guys, I know. Oh, no. This is one of the saddest scenes of the whole movie. The stampede of wildebeest come flying down the side of this ravine. And Simba is screwed. That is a trap and a half. Yo, you do not want to get stuck behind these guys. They will trample you to a pulp. Oh my goodness. That is terrifying. If we can make this trap work in Minecraft, that would be awesome. Now here's the thing. People aren't really distracted by lizards the same way that lions are. But people are distracted by diamonds. And this is going to be our distraction. And basically, we want it to be when someone mines up one of these diamonds, it's going to bring down a horde of wildebeest. Not actually, we don't have wildebeest in Minecraft. But we do have hoglins that look just like them. It's going to bring hordes of them down into this ravine. Basically, we can test off all the diamonds being mined up by using an observer, just like we did with the door, putting a redstone dust under here. When they get mined up, it outputs a redstone signal. But we need it to keep repeatedly spawning in Hoglins. I'm thinking maybe we can hide the dispensers. Okay, yeah, we'll hide them just in this wall here, guys. And we'll dig this out back. All right, let's go ahead and select this space here. Bang, and come round to here. Slash, slash, set air. Just like so. And now what we're going to need is a dispenser here. One, two, three, four. I think that'll be good enough. You know what? No, no, no. Let's take it to the next level. We'll go five dispensers like so. And fill each of these up with hoglin spawn eggs. All right, guys? So basically, you take those diamonds out. We've got five dispensers constantly, repeatedly spawning hoglins. You don't want to mess with this. We're going to place repeaters going into each of those. And then we're going to need... Oh, how are we going to do this? We're going to need a comparator here, which is going to be... Oh, no. It needs to be one back on subtract mode with redstone like that. And then going into here, that'll repeat it. 
Now, we'll do the exact same thing as last time using our slime block system. So we'll need to put obsidian there and bring this down two blocks as well. Up we go. Bang, bang, bang. All right, and then put our comparator back. Okay, will that just be one slime block? Yeah, I think one slime block should be fine. We don't actually need two this time. And then we'll need to have a sticky piston facing upwards here. So let's go ahead and place that up. This is going to be a bit tricky. Up, oh, there we go. And we need to attach that somehow to the diamonds here. So basically, I'm thinking we build a tunnel under here, which has all of this redstone dust. So let's go ahead and build in this direction somewhere. And then it needs to connect down to here. So let's go ahead and dig down. And perfect. All right, there we go. Now we'll connect those two. And this redstone dust has to come down from those diamonds all the way here. We're going to need a repeater here so that our signal doesn't go out. Wrap that around the corner. And then if that comes down, we can use our observers to detect when that is activated. And when it's activated, the observers will send a signal up here all the way to this sticky piston, pushing that up, and then this complete our redstone circuit if we put a repeater there and a block of redstone there. Will that work? I don't know. We're about to find out here, guys. Let's cover this up, and then we can hide these dispensers using stone, and we'll build this in so it looks just like the side of the ravine. Now that that's covered up and hidden, so let's say I'm one of your friends here, guys, who's tried to take your diamonds. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves a pickaxe. We'll switch it to survival mode. You know, we dig up these diamonds here, guys. Bang, mine. Did this work? Yo! <laughs> it worked! Oh my goodness! Here come the stampede of hoglins! And yo, I am not gonna survive this! Yo! <laughs> that was awesome! So if you wanna see more, guys, that's all the time we've got for us. So you're gonna have to subscribe to see the next video. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, anyways, you're bad. Bye!